So what I've got here is a retinet, Kodak retinet. Now the retinets were like the uh, well, consumer grade version of the retinas if you like. They were the cheaper cameras, they used a um, triplet lens and they were to, uh, they would have sold for a lot less money than the retinas. They were still a reasonably capable 35mm camera and they were generally very well made, good standard of finish. So retinets are often found in quite good condition. This one, well you wouldn't say this one was in quite good condition. The leatherettes are peeling off, it's a bit Zeiss bumpy. The leatherettes patch has fallen off the advanced lever. And it's got other issues. The shutter is obviously loose on the body. I think the whole front panel's loose on the body to tell the truth. But that's a Retinet 1A. The first type of Retinet 1A, they had the 50mm lens. The later ones had a 45mm lens. So this one, this one's got the Vero shutter. Now the Vero shutter is very much the same as the Pronto shutter except it lacks the self-timer. So this would be the least expensive of the Retinet 1As you could say. It didn't have the fancy shutter with the self-timer. These two cameras, they obviously need to be serviced. This one here has got, certainly got issues. Oh, the shutter does fire. It's mate here, with the Pronto shutter, the shutter on that one doesn't really want to work well at all. This one's a much tidier camera. It's in very good condition really, cosmetically, but it does need to be stripped and serviced. So what I thought I'd do is I would strip these two cameras down, give you a chance to look at the cameras, uh, see what's involved in stripping them down and repairing them because uh, yeah, they're quite a handy little camera really, and of course they're usually relatively cheap. This one here, we'll start with this one I think. What I'll do is I'll take down both cameras, now where there are differences between them, or where there are faults that are different between the two cameras, I'll point them out. But this one here we'll start with. First thing I want to do here is remove the shutter from the camera body. So we open the back of the camera. Now there's no swinging cover on the back catch of the retinets. This the back catch is pretty stiff. Looks a bit corroded there, so that's probably why. The retaining ring. Getting to the retaining ring in the retinets is a different problem than the retinas. I've got a, a different tool for doing this because the, the retaining ring is a different size. See if we can get this one loose. We already know the shutter's loose, so it shouldn't be hard. Yeah, that's just spinning off. Okay. There's our retaining ring. And the shutter's falling off the front. Yeah. It's joined here with the flash contact. You can see the flash contact here. And there's something sticking up there too. Not sure what that is. This is the shim. The shim from behind the shutter. But this, I'll have to get the soldering iron on this and just desolder that connection. So I'll go away and do that. Okay, well as you can see we've got our flash connection disconnected. Here's our shutter. Not much to see from the outside. I'll just put its retaining ring back on there. I mean it's a shim. Oh, it's got two shims. And I'll put the retaining ring there just to stop it getting lost. I'll put this to one side. You notice this one's got a UV filter on the front of it. That's a handy thing. Same size as what fits the retinas, the uh, 
three C types and the two A two A types. It's very popular. I'll put that shutter to one side. Let's have a look at the body. I said the front of the camera was loose, and you can see that this whole chrome trim plate here is loose. Let's have the three screws out of that. A lot of parts are common between the retinas and the retinettes, particularly fasteners. So retinettes can serve as a useful source of parts if you're lost for a, you know, the chrome screws from the top cover or an accessory shoe, for example. Let's lift this off. We've got a plastic piece here and then this is just chromed. It all looks to be very tidy. And here's their front plate. These screws are often also commonly loose on the likes of the retinettes. We'll just check and see what they're like. Yeah that's loose. That one's just on the verge of loose. I think I'll get this piece of leatherette off. You can see that it's flapping in the breeze. And uh, leatherette that's torn away like that tends to be very vulnerable. It's easy to catch it on something and end up tearing it. So we'll see if we can get this piece of leatherette off. Now its mate had obviously just fallen off. And it's fallen off because of corrosion under the body under the leatherettes. This side's obviously stuck a little bit better. Yeah, we've got it off. That white stuff, that's all corrosion products. As is this stuff here. That's corrosion products and it's uh, aluminium salts, I would say. The camera body itself, let's have a look at this. We can start with the top cover. Now the rewind, much the same as getting the rewind off a retina. Just put something through the fork to stop it turning. Unscrew the knob with your fingers. Job done. Take the knob off as a single piece. This can be taken apart to clean up later. The frame counter at this end that's not like that on the retinas. On the retinas, when it gets to the end of the film, the, the uh, film advance is locked. But on the retinettes, they didn't have that feature. Or at least this model of retinette. So we'll just take the single screw out of the end here of the top cover. Two screws at the rewind end. And I'll carefully lift that top cover off, hopefully not disturbing too much. So here's our top cover. Now the viewfinder components are all fixed to the inside of the top cover. This one looks complete. Oh no, it's, there's something odd going on there. Looking at the back of this, the viewfi viewfinder window there, I can see something odd. What's happened? Okay, it's been pushed, I would say. Here's a mask that has jumped loose. Now that mask holds that little glass lens in place. Well, plastic, in fact. So we'll just slide this back in position. Because we will deal with this, but not just yet. No, that's not going in. Put it in the wrong way around, at least ways it'll fit then. That's better. Okay, so I'll just put that little mask back in place so it's not falling out. That holds, well, it's just fallen out. Saved me a lot of trouble, that did. Okay, I'll tell you all about that later when we come to cleaning up the viewfinder. You've got to be very careful with this. 
that viewfinder lens at the back there, the outside piece is a piece of glass, but behind that is a, the optical element, if you like. That's a plastic lens, and that plastic is very, very soft, and it scratches if you look at it the wrong way. So you don't want to be scratching it. I'll just put that top cover to one side. Let's bring the body back in. Okay, so we can lift off our shutter release button. So these are the components here. We've got the button itself from the top. We've got the shutter release shaft, if you like, and a return spring for the shutter release shaft. Now this is all sticky with uh, dried grease. That would certainly need to be cleaned. What would happen is when they get sticky, you might depress the shutter, it might not return properly to the rest position. Our film advance here, if we swing the film advance here, you'll see it swings this post at the top. That post activates the frame counter and moves it one notch each time. You can see it's got an arm attached to it here. And that arm bears on this component at the front, which swings across and cocks the shutter. The shutter is coupled to it here. And this screw here is on the top of the release lever. The release lever works as much the same as it does on a retina of the same vintage. It releases the film advance and allows you to wind on to the next shot. Ideally, this activates at exactly the same point in the travel of the shutter release shaft as the shutter releases. Okay, so let's see what else we can find here. Let's take the uh, two brackets off the end. They're just the brackets that hold the top cover on. Now, there are no strap lugs on this retinette. But these two posts, particularly the that supports the top cover, because you've got to have some way to fix the top cover to the camera. And that frees up this chrome trim plate. That's in quite good condition here, no problems at all. Our rewind here at the end of the camera, there's two screws hold that in place. That screw was not loose. But it's mate. No, no, we're good. Just gather those screws up. Now here's our rewind. Now it's not a two-piece arrangement like it would be on a retina, so you can't pull the knob up part way to allow you easy access for rewinding the film. You have to rewind the film with the button down in the normal position, flush to the top cover. This is a bit sticky. The usual culprits dried out grease. I think we can take the front cover off now since there's nothing else in our way there. Four screws, and these ones are probably all loose. At least three of them were loose. Yeah, they're all loose. So here the screws like that come to get loose. Well, most likely it's through thermal cycling as the camera has uh, heated up and cooled down over time. Perhaps it's lived its life on a windowsill or something like that and it's just cooled up, heated up in the sun, cooled down overnight. But those temperature changes expand and contract metal and that tends to loosen fastness. Right, so this piece here, that's the piece that couples to the shutter and this little arm couples to the arm 
from the top of the film, film advance there. So this is the shutter release finger here if you like. That's the piece that bears on the back of the shutter. And the shutter release shaft pushes down on this from the top. That's a bit sticky. Dried grease, the usual culprits. These three screws that hold this tube in place, let's just check what they're like. They're tight. That's good. That, that screw's got a bit of a funny look to it. It might just be a little bit damp, might have been damaged a bit, a bit rough treatment when it was assembled. Probably no one's been in as deep as this since the camera was built. Take that baffle out. That plastic baffle is quite important. Um, if the baffles are not present then you tend to get flare spots on your film just from light bouncing around inside this space. You can see there's, there's dust and rubbish in here, that's probably just corrosion products. It's a bit of green coloured there, that's almost certainly from uh, corrosion of the brass screw. Okay, so far so good. The advance lever. Three screws hold the advance lever in place. The advance lever is very much the same as that on the retinas, except it's plastic. Now, generally speaking, they've survived very well, considering they're about 60 years old or so. But they it's not uncommon to find these cameras with a broken advance lever. So they fail in a couple of ways. They fail because people have just been too rough on them. Or they've got to the end of the film, the advance lever's stuck up and then they've dropped the camera on the ground and hit the arm and it's broken. Sometimes they fail because the screws have rusted up. And as they've rusted up, they've expanded a bit and that's applied a lot of pressure through here. And then the plastic has just cracked through the screw holes. That doesn't look too bad. Other things at the base of the camera. Well, at the base of the camera, we've got the surround here, the tripod surround. Now, this is where you would have the back catch release cover on a retina. Here we simply have the tripod socket surround. That's just plastic, no problems with that, it came away nicely. Our leatherette here, well it's always an unknown as to how leatherette's going to come off a camera. We've got corrosion on the front panels of the camera, but that's on alum aluminium of course, so that can corrode differently than the chrome brass plate here. Now this is lifting off exceptionally easily. The corrosion under here has just made the adhesive let go entirely. It's just not hanging on at all. That's all good as far as we're concerned because it means that the leatherette comes off in one piece and relatively undamaged. The base plate trim here, we've got the much the same arrangement as on the retinas. Now that's not wanting to come loose and I would suggest that that's because it's corroded in place. That one's coming out. That one's coming out. That one's coming out. Let's have another go. Doesn't really want to know that one. That one's coming out. We've got one here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the majority of these screws are coming out. 
one more here, I think. Yeah, there it is. So six of the seven came out without any argument at all. The seventh one, right here, that's reluctant. We can't see it from the inside of the camera. There's a lot of corrosion around here. You can see those corrosion salts there. It's almost certainly that's stuck in with corrosion. I'll have to deal with that. I'll put a drop of naphtha on here. I'll put this up on a wooden block. My all-purpose block of wood which is getting very worn out with the years and I have got an old screwdriver a very robust screwdriver that's long since lost its head and I'm going to give this a couple of taps while applying some torque and see if we can get that screw loose That is exceptionally reluctant to move. I'm going to have to try something else. I'll heat the head of that screw up with a soldering iron and try again. Well, different metals expand and contract at different rates. So I'm hopeful that by heating that screw, it will come loose. Not today. Okay. So I think at this stage I'll apply a little bit of uh, penetrating oil, CRC in 556 in this case, and leave this for the night. I'll come back tomorrow.